Hello everybody, uh, tonight I was going to look at Central America and uh, it's one of the most awesome places to study on the planet. Actually, this is one of the most uh, coolest studies that I've ever done and worked on um, really because of problem solving um, and also the uniqueness of what's going on in Central America. Um, if you think about it, uh, essentially there's nowhere else on the planet um, that really connects uh, the North and the South uh, together like uh, Central America. Um, so it's a very mysterious piece of land because it uh, combines the Northern Hemisphere uh, with the Southern Hemisphere. Um, it's also uh, connecting kind of the jungle uh, with North America. And for the United States... Um, you know, Florida is pretty interesting. California gets pretty interesting. Uh, but Central America gets unbelievably interesting as well as the Caribbean. So um, there's just so much to talk about uh, from someone that grows up in the United States. Uh, it's a super interesting topic um, to discuss, um, as well as the population uh, dynamics uh, in Central America, there's just a lot of people down there um, relative to uh, some other areas. And there's some really interesting mountains. So basically, one surprising thing for a lot of people uh, that live in North America is that the mountains actually start to get taller in South America. And that kind of starts in Central America. So there's actually more earthquakes there uh, and the mountains are taller. And then we want to look at some of the deforestation and some of the problems um, associated with uh, life in Central America um, and then look at some of the infrastructure here um, as well as the airports and airport traffic um, and then here's kind of the detailed population map you can kind of see uh, some of the islands uh, I just talked with some guy from Haiti uh, recently and then just looking at um, also the uh, economy of Central America both the, the imports this is the imports and the exports and kind of looking at what that means uh, over time. Um, and then there's just a ton of shipping lines that are very interesting um, because of the Panama Canal down here, as well as some other ones that you might not be familiar with um, that would be super interesting. This is one of my favorite maps. It's actually the soil map and the river map. And I think if we look at this one uh, earlier on, I'm going to move it earlier to the discussion, uh, we'll probably learn a lot about Central America that way. Um, and then, of course, there's different soil grids. Um, this one is also super interesting. I think I'm going to move that one also earlier to our discussion um, just because it shows the weather patterns. There's just some like really unique stuff going on, especially as you get towards Colombia and Venezuela, but we're going to primarily look at Mexico. Um, and how that relates to some of the other uh, coastal cities along the West Coast. Uh, and then the geology is actually really weird because I was surprised there's so much more earthquakes in Central America than there is uh, pretty much anywhere else in the world except for Southeast Asia and Oceania, uh, for example. So there's quite a lot of earthquakes there. Um, and then we're kind of going to look at the farmland maps and see kind of make some predictions about the future here you can see nicaragua being heavily farmed out as well as some very unique lakes uh deep in there uh, that you may not have heard of so uh so let's start with like something that we might not typically look at uh for central america and that is the earth at night so <clears throat> i'm gonna pause this video uh, i'll give you a chance to kind of catch up um, but we're going to try to diagram this out um, and kind of look at uh, what it means to live in Central America, um, how these cities kind of are interconnected. Um, and the Earth at Night map is kind of a good way to start with that. Um, and we'll have to probably zoom in here to look at some of the details um, and see that. But I'll pause this for a moment for let people catch up to the conversation uh, and see if who all wants to participate with this tonight so let's take a step back and really say like why why study this at all why study central america um let's zoom out on this earth's map and ask that question seriously so you can really understand why you're spending your time uh tonight for a valuable reason so number one reason is if you live in the united states 
basically Canada and Mexico are our nearest neighbors. Those are probably the first places if you ever travel outside of the United States. You might go to Mexico first or Canada, uh, just logically um, speaking. So what that means is that um, all of Central America is really part, very much a part. I mean, it's really only until you get to Panama uh, that we switch into South America. So it's very much a part of North American lifestyle. Um, there's so many Africans, but there's so many Latinos in the United States. It's really impossible to separate Latin America with America. And I have so many close friends. Uh, one of my closest friends is a Mexican guy uh, that lives in New York City now. Um, and he is originally from Mexico, right? And now he lives basically in the United States. So there's so many people that come up from Mexico, but actually... In the future, you know, a lot of people go down to Florida, retire in Florida, but it's, it's getting too expensive in California. Uh, Texas is getting very expensive uh, and other places in the South. And really, it's now a different era for the future of basically what's been going on um, in South America. One of my friends uh, was having trouble with housing and he just moved out of New York. Um, he's just messaging me right now, actually and basically uh, moved down to Miami. Uh, but even that, um, you know, is it's not nearly, I, I guess the really exciting thing about the discussion tonight uh, is the mountain maps, right? So when you look at these mountain maps, this does not show up in Miami. Miami is really flat, very boring or <laughs> ordinary, uh, but there's some very exotic mountain ranges uh, that you start to see uh, that are not just like this plateaus like you see in Mexico, um, but particularly down in uh, Central America, which you really don't see anywhere else in the world. Um, and what happens is that the biodiversity uh, becomes some of the most important in the world because you're right along the equator and you have these major mountain ranges. Um, so you have monkeys um, and all kinds of other wildlife uh, that you would never see uh, in the United States just because of the mountain range, the geology, the dirt, all that other kind of stuff. So let's let's diagram this out. So I think that should give you a pretty good introduction to why you'd want to study Central America. Um, so you can kind of, I'm gonna zoom in here. Um, I already have a discussion on the Caribbean. So if you're interested in the Caribbean, we're gonna kind of keep that separate. Uh, the wealth is actually probably gonna be higher um, it's really a debate, right? Some of these islands are very extremely wealthy, um, but the vast majority of the productivity of the food and the farming is probably going to come from Central America. Uh, if you go to the grocery store, uh, you can see there's not a whole lot of land here in Mexico, but honestly, uh, at some times 70% or more of the food can be from Mexico or Central America. And in fact, all the bananas, fruits, uh, like if you get fruit in the wintertime, it basically all comes from Central America. So it's really an extraordinary place uh, for food uh, and biodiversity and just so many reasons uh, to study Central America. So uh, if you take a step back, uh, I've been studying this for many years and um, you're going to probably have to look around the world at all the interesting places, but Central America is going to be up there. So let's start off uh, by circling, circling the major areas right so we basically got a bunch of areas uh that look pretty interesting on this map right uh and these are kind of the major cities i wish i would have done this in red but we already started uh so we'll just keep it like this for now uh actually what we're going to do is do this a little bit differently um so you're going to notice something really weird here right so we're basically getting from central america into mexico and mexico i just put in a different color um, this is actually part of mexico in here uh, you have the yucatan peninsula uh, that's definitely part of mexico uh, but you can kind of see that actually once you get to these cities in here uh, you start to get to uh, guatemala and some other areas in central america uh, right so these areas um are actually very different um, and uh, the the light out of Mexico City is just extraordinary right so there's no joke uh, that Mexico City is huge um, and 
I was actually really surprised at how cool Mexico City is. Um, they're actually complaining about too many people from like California, um, Texas, like Americans moving into Mexico City. Um, it's really nice because the temperature isn't super, super as hot as you'd think um, because it's actually up in the mountains. So if you look at this map, it's actually pretty high up altitude there uh, in Mexico City. And whoa, what happened to my map? So uh, actually the climate is great. Um, um, the problem is water and just the vastness of the city here um, becomes crime um, can be spread all around the city, different areas. Um, but actually, it looks great. So if you do Street View in Mexico City, you might be shocked. Um, it looks better than many parts of California. California is actually looking pretty boring. Um, San Francisco, uh, Berkeley. It actually looks a little bit more like Berkeley uh, and Oakland, if you're familiar with that, than uh, San Francisco. Um, but maybe like the Mission District, uh, if you're familiar with California at all. Um, but here you're getting out into Guadalajara. Um, and Puerto Vallarta, um, Acapulco, and some other cities. So there's definitely <coughs> uh, all that kind of along the coast here um, that we really <coughs> uh, need to look at carefully as well. Um, and then there's a separate side of the coast, which is kind of the farming side on here, right? Um, but man, does it get fun. I never even had a chance. Um, I took a bus from Guatemala uh, <clears throat> to El Salvador and then down into Honduras. And it just, I didn't have enough time, but man, uh, was I surprised at how fun uh, Guatemala was. Uh, and it was actually, and Guatemala is probably not even considered as fun as the rest of these places as you get down to Panama, um, further down, <laughs> down down the coastline. So uh, unbelievably uh, mountainous and uh, beautiful landscapes. Um, so let's get into that. Let me save this image here, um, first of all, before we get too far into this discussion. I'm going to pause this uh, and talk with a friend of mine for a second here, but catch up to the conversation. Uh, get really excited about Central America because it's super affordable, um, very close to uh, North, uh, you know, the United States. Uh, and definitely these guys need to be our partners because. Uh, everywhere in here is so fun. Uh, it's like California times three. Um, so because there's just so many exotic mountains and lakes um, that definitely do not exist like in California. Okay, I'll be right back. Wow, so some of my friends are starting to go crazy on AI and artificial intelligence. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to kind of test this all out is to see... You know, like before we get AI going crazy about this, I wanted to kind of uh, take a deep dive uh, into the entire planet um, and kind of look at it both logically and spiritually uh, to see what's going on. So I see a bunch of my friends uh, still here online, uh, basically all from the United States. Um, but like I said, this is perhaps one of the best discussions um, simply because we have so many fun places to check out and it's almost so fun that the people here are getting a little bit stressed uh, like we uh, found out in Mexico City um, you know kind of changes the prices and all that this is probably the next best map to look at it's the NASA population map um, and I will circle this one in red this time um, and I think I'm gonna shrink down the size of that uh, that uh, this a little bit so we can see a little more details but wow okay so yeah obviously mexico city is huge here um but look at all this right here so you can see that there's tons of people coming in there um and then there's kind of like an area right here in mexico and then some new stuff coming in here and you can even see the out to this island uh starting to get pretty populated and then here you got cancun um and then another city in the yucatan um, but look at this too. So you have the lake that kind of shows up here um, and some population kind of like due to the inland areas. Um, and I was just looking at someone that lived down in Colombia today on my Facebook, a new friend. Um, <clears throat> and she has like horses and they got like all these cows and just like animals everywhere on their property. So even though you're not living right on the ocean, it can be really fun in some of these areas because there's so much wildlife 
uh, and the animals just love it. Um, and unfortunately, it looked like they weren't taking care of their um, horse too well. They were kind of like dragging it around to try to show it off on camera. Um, but it was kind of funny to see. Um, but look at this too, as that Panama is actually getting extraordinarily expensive. So uh, I almost can't travel to Panama because it's so expensive. Um, it was one of my top priorities. My priority was to kind of travel from Guatemala all the way down to Panama by bus, but I just had so much fun and it took a lot longer than I thought um, because it is like essentially, you know, a thousand miles um, and it's not easy um, because the bus system is actually, at least it's still, you know, they don't really have a, a same kind of train system as they have in the United States and the bus system is pretty much what they rely on. So, um, and it would be nice to get, um, maybe I didn't have the money for airports back then. So, Anyway, but this gives us a very clear picture uh, for Central America, um, and I hope that kind of explains some things. I'm going to pause this. Um, someone is texting me here. Give me a second. Uh, so one of the questions uh, that I keep asking myself as I study the entire planet, um, someone from uh, the Middle East just texted me, um, and basically, you know, the funny thing about Central America um as you start to study the planet, let me get this loaded up here. So uh, it's actually like a bridge. Like that person, What well, the interesting thing is this is like the midpoint between North America and South America. Um, and the Middle East is just so vastly bigger uh, than Central America and you have no water. So the difference here is we're actually talking about a connection where there's tons of water, um, a really beautiful landscape, um, and a lot of people that look kind of Middle Eastern. So it's very weird. Um, the person that's texting me, um, you know, they actually kind of look uh, Latino or Latina. And basically, uh, that's the way a lot of people look here. Um, so it's kind of really strange. Um, but there are a lot of Africans, too. So it becomes Afro-Caribbean, uh, like in Haiti and Jamaica. So there's kind of some weird... Um, twists, uh, and then by the time you get to Brazil, um, it's almost half African and half um, uh, Mexican and uh, excuse me, uh, Latino. So, uh, so it's a very interesting part. Um, and this map, uh, I want to diagram next, but I'm gonna have to pause um, this because it's so complicated. Um, to look at. Um, what it starts to show you is this area of Belize, Honduras, um, and Guatemala. It basically kind of changes out into the Caribbean uh, because of the geology here. So there's kind of almost a forceful incoming landing point here. So uh, what that suggests to me um, is that in the future, uh, a lot of people from Cuba um, and even Jamaicans, Haitians, um, and when you think about the geopolitics, of what's going on, um, you really have to trace the landscape um, because all these microscopic decisions are kind of the weather, like you might uh, not think of it, but on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah, you can travel from like one country to the next uh, logically by taking a bus, uh, but all the, the animals and the wildlife and eventually the people uh, depend on the mapping of the geology and the soil maps. So it does tell us quite a bit about what's going on here. Um, you can kind of see some relationships uh, between uh, Venezuela here and the Dominican Republic, in particular on the ocean seafloor. Um, but I'm gonna pause this uh, and I'll be right back. So I see some friends uh, from Africa actually, and then also Florida, and then a f another guy uh, that worked in China here. And I just wanna kind of put it into perspective uh, what we're talking about. So we basically get a pretty dry area uh, here in Mexico, right? Um, when you look at the relief map, um, it basically is pretty dry in some of that area, kind of like East Africa. Uh, but the difference is that you have the ocean front so close on either side. So you really have two sides, whereas in, in like East Africa, you basically only have the ocean on one side. You have to cross the entire Congo. Um, and it's nothing like the Congo because um, well, it's a little bit similar because it's still not quite on the equator. <clears throat> so you have these vast mountain ranges that come in in the middle here. Um, and that really only shows up in Central America. It's kind of like Rwanda, um, but more 
with the water being close, like the ocean being close to Rwanda. So that you have some weird freshwater lakes um, that also exist here. Um, and you can see a couple big lakes um, in Central America. Um, but uh, it's hard to explain <laughs> Um, just how awesome it would be to have all these mountains and I've never actually seen them in person but wow uh, would this mountain range here in Costa Rica and Panama be awesome to see because it gets with these weird little lakes uh, Nicaragua El Salvador and so on so uh, and you can see how there's this weird split here um, coming along here and you get some of that taste starting in Puerto Vallarta Acapulco and some other uh, areas along Mexico can kind of give you that idea and actually one of the top tourist destinations is starting to be the tip of the uh, Baja Peninsula this uh, this Baja California area so I have a friend or a neighbor in my city that traveled down there and said it was really fun and took some really awesome pictures but it's just really dry in those areas so you don't really get the wildlife that you get down through here so I see a couple um, religious friends that I have online, as well as a pastor and even a priest. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of missions trips to think about, um, you know, helping with like housing, water, um, and other areas. <coughs> um, but it is pretty advanced. Um, it's not... Um, it's kind of like different uh, than suburban United States by a long shot um, because in the United States it's very flat, right? And then we have all these mountain ranges here. Um, so let's kind of circle some of the interesting areas, right? So you have these kind of like gap areas um, and then this whole kind of other area which really should be thought about. So these inlets actually become very popular sometimes, like San Francisco Bay Area, um, and it becomes <clears throat> uh, very important to look at those because, like for example, down here in Panama, where the Panama Canal is, um, that's also a very other important region. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, you can kind of get these transition points, um, and both the wildlife, um, city develop, urban development and urban planning really changes um, obviously uh, in these regions you have um, different types of landscapes so let's look at how this developed in South America you kind of have to look at the detailed population map uh, I'm gonna do that I think in red here um, so you can see there's kind of a pathway through here and then through here and then once you get to guatemala city things kind of split right and the geology as we noticed also split right it goes out that way and then it goes out that way but then it also kind of converges back through here again <clears throat> and it actually goes back inland and then out <clears throat> out like that um now there isn't much connection along the Yucatan Peninsula um, so that's uh, pretty much all um, through the northern side um, gets pretty complicated along that side as well um, so you can see a little bit <coughs> more um, cohesiveness kind of all through there <coughs> um, and then right in here there's actually kind of a break right we see <coughs> by the time you get to Costa Rica you head down here and then through here <coughs> excuse me um, so it kind of gives us a really, this is a really profound understanding um, because we see how each city is connected. And even in the United States, um, you know, you see some of this here too, but it's a lot more um, planned and organized. And you actually kind of got to look at the mountain range in combination with the population. So uh, we could do that on one of the maps. I'm sorry I didn't grab that map. Um, I have another one. Um, that we could look at that shows some of the topography as well as population. Um, I'll go into some of the more detailed ones in a second. I think the one that I wanted to do similar to that is uh, this one or... Hmm. Oh yeah, this one. So this one shows us some of the 
uh, some of the soil as well as rivers. Um, and you can kind of see the population in here. It's on the purple, bright purple stuff. So there's kind of a weird way to look at that. It's hard to get everything on one map. Um, but here you can see how important that Yucatan Peninsula will probably become for farming, right? Because it's got the rivers um, and then all this soil right along Mexico. So we already have quite a lot of farming there. Um, and then in the future, Honduras and Nicaragua playing as much of a role as the Yucatan Peninsula. And it's actually just gets more and more complicated because once you get to here, you're starting to get into jungle farming because you're right at the equator and you're actually getting near the Amazon jungle. I mean, right, <laughs> less than a thousand miles. So uh, basically that brings up another side of Mexico, right? There's all this on Mexico as well um, because you have that river chain and then a very interesting river chain here. Um, and it would be good to study the city out here. It might be one of these cities is gonna be Acapulco. This is gonna be Puerto Vallarta in that region. So, uh, but you can kind of see in the background, it's kind of blurred a little bit. It shows Guatemala, Belize, uh, and it does have the country boundaries on this map as well. So. Um, and it is interesting to see um, the details on the farming side. So I separated the farming map slightly um, because this one, uh, it's just hard to see the population. It's hard to see the soil map and the farming map on the same one. So here you can kind of see uh, it definitely, Mexico is definitely doing more farming on this side. Um, and that's actually for historic reasons. There's a lot of, it's flatter along this coast. Um, and there hasn't really been, the Yucatan has been protected. Um, but you can see um, with Cancun and some of these party cultures uh, that start what, uh, you know, so cheap to fly from Houston over to Cancun now. You can do it almost anywhere in the United States for under a couple hundred dollars uh, to get to Cancun. So... Uh, but really, the, the, real, the real excitement starts uh, down in San Salvador, uh, which I've been to. And I had a hard time in San Salvador. For some reason, um, these inland cities, what's going on here is that they basically, uh, they don't live along the coast sometimes because of farming and also because of the heat, right? It's just so hot um, sometimes <laughs> in when you're not up in the mountains. So... Um, but basically here is kind of a separate chain. So this is almost starts to make more sense. You can kind of see, and I didn't really draw that good. So I'm not going to draw that line on there. Um, you can kind of draw that yourself, but basically, uh, the weird thing about this, uh, uh, farming actually is it's done separately. Nicaragua and Honduras, it's actually done more on the South side here, right? So that shows there's actually maybe even a problem, uh, politically, there going on um and man is the city of mexico huge heading all the way out to guadalajara um there's been some famous rock concerts going on american rock concerts in guadalajara so it's almost a separate city because it's got a special lake here the thing i really like about guadalajara um is it does have that huge lake you can't really see it on here but it's a huge lake about that size on the map um, they do get these big lakes down here. Um, you can see this city right here, right next to um, Managua, um, next to that huge lake. And then some of this stuff coming in on the port here, as well as a few port cities there. But you don't really see, I mean, that's probably Acapulco right there. Um, but uh, there is some farming done along the coast there. Um, but definitely there's some really fun spots um, to do farming that I'd highly recommend if you wanted to do small farm. A friend of mine in town, um, they work at the farmer's market making approximately $20,000 a year, uh, maybe 30. Um, and they all they have is a small, like one acre, couple acres of land. Uh, and they're renting it. Uh, and they just rent the house that they live on there. And uh, they're able to do that pretty sustainably. Um, so there's certainly a lot of little smaller farms. So you, although the mountain range here, the reason I'm saying this is the mountain range doesn't allow for that and the dirt quality changes. So the dirt quality is probably pretty good right along here. Um, but once you get on the coast, there's actually little pockets as well 
where you could farm uh, kind of, and you saw some of that farmland uh, there on that map. So uh, let me bring that back to the, wow, where did that map go? Um, yeah, so uh, there's all different kinds of ways to look at it. Um, and, you know, basically this is the population and farming map and you can see the huge amount of farmland. And actually this is all going up into Canada. This is along the Mississippi River. So this basically shows how vital uh, the Mississippi River is. You can see that there. And then there's all those rivers on that other map um, that we looked at earlier um, that kind of explained that. So uh, it is getting a little bit late. So I'm probably going to close out this discussion pretty soon here. And um, this is a pure population map uh, as well as rivers. So you can kind of see um, this is really helpful here because we can see uh, these cities in here, we need to worry about water pollution. Um, and then as well as in here, um, we'd have to worry about water pollution. Um, and because it's at the start of the river and we want to be cautious because that all flows down the rest of the river. And you can see some of the lakes um, on this map, which is really beautiful as well. Um, and it really emphasizes, yeah, Mexico City is huge, but look at all this stuff from Guatemala, um, San Salvador, heading down to Nicaragua and Honduras. So it's just huge, um, huge amount of people there. Um, I wish I could show compared to California. It's way more than California. So uh, it's very important there. So anyway, so take a look at all these maps um, and try to diagram out some of it yourself. You'll definitely learn a lot. Uh, the airport map is interesting. This is the major airports in red and the smaller airports in orange and i would highly recommend never flying into an orange airport it's just they're so small um that you basically can't get a reasonable flight this would be a very small airport even they call them medium size so the red points are really the only points that you can actually fly into here you have cancun right mexico city um, maybe puerto vallarta and then here is acapulco right Belize. So it really does change quite a bit. And you can see because they have those two airports there, there's actually a lot of people around there. And maybe this might be a bigger airport than we think, even though it's an orange dot. So they're probably really working on expanding the size of that airport uh, there. So sorry that some of these diagrams are kind of out of bounds, but you can see all the earthquakes there in that map. Um, and then some of the deforestation. And then the electrical map really shows Mexico. And there's really a point right in here uh, that needs to be thought about, right? So that heads out. Once you get to Guatemala, you can see there's almost a problem here um, on some of this. So, uh, but yeah, there's so many cool things uh, to basically take a look at on the infrastructure. Um, and you can see the complexity in Nicaragua as well, kind of like restraightening out the electrical diagram and then Costa Rica getting a little bit messy there on their electricity. So probably El Salvador knowing what they're doing in Nicaragua uh, and then Panama just being like dead straight to Panama City. Um, so if you're not if you're not along this line, um, you basically don't have electricity in Panama. Um, but Mexico uh, also kind of really having their act together actually on electricity with the exception of maybe up in here looking a little bit complicated and there's maybe a, a Guadalajara getting a little bit complicated and then some veiny stuff in here so uh and then very heavily dependent on this so anyway and then super complicated as you get right on the border of texas almost conflicting um with the electricity border there so uh but super interesting to look at this kind of giving you an overall picture so i see so many people around um looking at this potentially right now um and i really hope you've had a fun time uh taking a look at all the details um, with me. Um, there's so many different aspects of understanding here. We didn't even study the climate map, but it could be really fun to just do uh, one of these places that gets a lot of lightning um, or the weather patterns look interesting. Um, it just was super fun for me to be down in Miami uh, and look up at the clouds, um, you know, for hours and just be like, wow, this is amazing. Um, and that's nothing compared to what you get down here um, in Mexico um, and also further down so uh but anyway i hope you really enjoyed the study um it was fun for me to work on it um and again we just studied one of the most important parts of the planet again um for wildlife and just also for vacationing 
and getting to know uh, both North, all parts of North America, not just Canada and the United States. I would say I had a friend of mine, a new guy uh, I was talking with just tonight. I think he was from the Philippines. And he was like, yeah, I want to go to Los Angeles. And I was just like, man, Los Angeles is such a mess. Why would you ever want to go to Los Angeles? Um, I mean, it's yeah, it's cool, but Hollywood is kind of like pretty lame. Um, and there's a lot of uh, cooler stuff like in Central America. Um, but the problem is, is that they're very used to um, kind of like the life style. Like it, it is maybe different all over the world. So, but definitely Central America is a place to check out. So, um, and I think in the future, we're all going to look back uh, in the next 10 to 20 years and say, wow, why didn't we travel to Panama or Mexico more? Uh, and really focus on getting along with Mexico. So because there's so many, it's so much more beautiful than California, uh, this whole area. So we really need to focus on getting along with Latin America and Latinos um, and even Cuba. A lot of people say, um, you know, Puerto Rico is part, essentially kind of part of the United States now. Um, but uh, there's definitely a reason to try to get along because you can travel more freely um, and some things. So definitely work on relationships with people in Central America um, and we can have a much peacefuler area here um, and have some great things going on. So some friends are trying to text me now and I'll try to talk with you a little bit later, but I hope you enjoyed the discussion. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'd be glad to go through uh, any of the details with you about Central America or any other part of the planet. So this is really part of a series where I went around the entire planet and tried to understand everything. Um, and there's just so many details. So take a look at all those maps. Um, I have a mapping web page. Um, if you haven't seen it already, um, keep track of like, I don't know, almost a hundred different styles of maps, but it's even having trouble loading. It's getting to be so huge, but there's just tons of different maps. Uh, for the entire planet, um, farming maps, airport maps, as you can see, crop maps, river maps, soil maps, goes on and on, and that's only the top 10% of the map, so there's still 90% more. So anyway, take a look at all that. I hope you really enjoyed the study. I'm so thankful to be able to try to do this research. Um, it's been really fun uh, looking around the world, and like I said, this is one of my favorite places and I wanted to save most of it for you, the study, so you can take a look at all those maps on the links in the description. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Have a great night.